No is yes by Paul Jennings. The question is, did the girl kill her own father? Some say yes, some say no. Linda doesn't look like a murderess. She walks calmly up the steps of the high school stage, shakes the mayor's hand and receives her top award. Top of the school. She moves to the microphone to make her speech of acceptance. She's 17, beautiful and in love. Her words are delicate musical crystals falling upon receptive ears. The crowd rewards her clarity with loud applause, but it passes her by. She is seeking a face among the visitors in the front row. She finds what she's looking for, and her eyes meet those of a young man. They both smile. He knows the answer. It's finally finished, said Dr. Scrape. After 14 years of research, it is finished. He tapped the thick manuscript on the table. And you, Ralph, will be the first to see the results. They were sitting in the lounge, watching the sun lower itself once more into the grave of another day. Ralph didn't seem quite sure what to say. He was unsure of himself. In the end, he came out with, 14 years is a lot of work. What's it all about? Dr. Scrape stroked his pointed little beard, leaned across the coffee table. Tell me, he said, as a layman, how did you learn to speak? How did you learn the words and grammar of the English language? Give us a go, said Ralph good-naturedly. I haven't needed an education like you. Haven't been to university. I didn't even finish high school. I don't know stuff like that. You're the one with all the brains. You tell me, how did I learn to speak? When Ralph said, you're the one with the brains, Dr. Scrape smiled to himself and nodded wisely. Have a guess then, he insisted. Mm, my mother. My mother taught me to talk. Nope. Mm, my father then. Nope. Then who? asked Ralph with a tinge of annoyance. Nobody taught you, exclaimed Dr. Scrape. Nobody teaches children to talk. They just learn it by listening. If the baby is in China, it will learn Chinese because that's what it hears. If you get a newborn Chinese baby and bring it here, it will learn to speak English, not Chinese, just by listening to those around it. What's that got to do with your re... began Ralph, but he stopped. Dr. Scrape's daughter entered the room with a tray. She was a delicate, pale girl of about 14. Her face reminded Ralph of a porcelain doll. He was struck both by her beauty and her shyness. This is my daughter Linda, said Dr. Scrape with a flourish. G'day, said Ralph, awkwardly. And this is Mr. Pickering. She made no reply at first, but simply stood there staring at him, as if he were a creature from another planet. He felt like some exotic animal in a zoo, which was of total fascination to someone on the other side of the bar. Dr. Scrape frowned, and the girl suddenly remembered her manners. How do you do? she said awkwardly. Would you like some coffee? Oh, thanks a lot, said Ralph. White or black? Oh, black, thanks. Linda raised an eyebrow at her father. The usual for me, he said with a smirk. Ralph Pickering watched as Linda poured two cups of tea and poured milk into both of them. She looked up, smiled, and handed him one of the cups. Thanks a lot, he said. Salt? she asked, proffering a bowl with white crystals. Ralph looked at the bowl with red face. He felt uncomfortable in an elegant house. He didn't know the right way to act. He didn't have the right manners. He didn't know why he'd been asked in for a cup of coffee. He was just the apprentice plumber here to fix the drains. He looked down at his grubby overalls and mud-encrusted shoes. Uh, eh? said Ralph. Salt? she asked again, holding out the bowl. Ralph shook his head with embarrassment. Do they really have salt in their tea? He sipped from the delicate china cup. He liked coffee, black and with sugar, in a nice big mug. Somehow he'd ended up with white tea, no sugar, and a fragile cup which rattled in his big hands. He had the feeling, though, that Linda had not meant to embarrass him. If there was any malevolence, it came from Dr. Scrape, who was grinning hugely at Ralph's discomfort. Ralph Pickering scratched his head with his broken fingernails. The young girl looked at her watch. Will you be staying for breakfast? She asked Ralph kindly. We're having roast pork. It's nearly washed. Mm, no, thanks, he stumbled. My mum's expecting me home for tea. I couldn't stay the night. He noticed a puzzled expression on her face. She shook her head, as if not quite understanding him. The oddest feeling came over him, that she thought he was a bit mad. Ralph moved as if to stand up. No, 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 don't go yet, said Dr. Scrape. I haven't finished telling you about my research. 
although you have already seen some of it. He nodded towards his daughter, who had gone into the kitchen, could be heard preparing the pork for the evening meal. Now, where were we? He went on. Ah, yes, about learning to speak. So you see, my dear boy, we learn to speak just from hearing those who are around us talking. He was waving his hands as if delivering a lecture to a large audience. His eyes lit up with excitement. But ask yourself this. What if a child was born and never heard anyone speak except on the television? Never ever saw a real human being, only the television. Would the television do just as well as live people? Could they learn to talk? He paused, not really expecting Ralph to say anything. Then he answered his own question. No one knows. He exclaimed, thrusting a finger into the air, and it's never been done. It would be cruel, said Ralph, suddenly forgetting his shyness. Oh, you couldn't bring up a child and never heard anyone speak. It'd be a dirty trick. What, that's why it's never been done? Right, yelled Dr. Scrape, his little beard waggling away as he spoke. So I did the next best thing. I never let her hear anybody speak except me, he nodded towards the kitchen. You mean... began Ralph. Yes, yes, Linda, my daughter. She's never heard anyone in the world speak except me. You're the first person apart from me she's ever spoken to. You mean she's never been to school? Nope. Or kindergarten? Nope. Or shopping? Or to the beach? Nope, she's never been out of this house. But why? asked Ralph angrily. What for? It's an experiment, boy. She's learned a lot of words incorrectly, just by listening to me use the wrong words. All without a single lesson. I call up, down, and down, up. I call sugar, salt. Yes is no, and no is yes. It's been going on ever since she was a baby. I've taught her thousands of words incorrectly. She thinks that the room in there is called the laundry. He yelled, pointing to the kitchen. I've let her watch television every day, and all day, but it makes no difference. She still can't get it right. He picked up a spoon and chuckled. She calls this the carpet. And this, he said, holding up a fork. She calls chicken, and even when she sees a chicken on television, doesn't wake up. She doesn't change. She doesn't notice it. Proves my hypothesis point, that is, he added, for the benefit of Ralph, whom he'd considered to be an idiot. So you see, I've made a big breakthrough. I've proved that humans can't learn to speak properly from listening to television. Real people are needed. You know something, said Ralph slowly. If this is true, if you have really taught the poor kid all the wrong words... Dr. Scrape interrupted. Of course it's true. Of course it's true. He took out a worn exercise book and flipped over the pages. Here they are. Over 2,000 words, all learned incorrectly. Usually the opposites. Whenever I talk with Linda, I use these words. She doesn't know the difference. Dog is cat. Tree is lamppost. And is elephant. And just for fun, girl is boy. She calls herself a boy, although of course she knows she is the opposite sex to you. She would call you a girl. He gave a low, devilish laugh. Ralph's anger had completely swamped his shyness, and his feeling of awkwardness caused by the splendour of the mansion. You're a dirty mongrel, he said quietly. The poor thing has never met another person but you, and what a low specimen you are. You've mixed her all up. How's she going to get on in the real world? You mean in on the real world, not on in the real world, he smirked the doctor. He began to laugh. He thought it was a great joke. You'll have to get used to it, he said. When you talk to her, you'll have to get used to everything being back to front. What's it got to do with me? Why, I want you to try her out. Talk to her. See how she goes. Before I give my paper and show her to the world, I want to make sure it lasts. That she won't break down and start speaking correctly with strangers. I want you to be the first test. I want a common working man. Boy, he corrected. One who can't pull any linguistic tricks. Oh, leave me out of it, said Ralph forcefully. I don't want any part of it. It's cruel and... And... Uh, he searched around for a word. Oh, rotten, he spat out. Scrape grabbed his arm and spun him round. He was dribbling with false sincerity. But if you really care, if you really care about her, you'll try and help. Go on, he said, pushing Ralph towards the kitchen. Tell her what a despicable creature I am. Tell her the difference between salt and sugar. Set her straight. That's the least you can do. Or don't you care at all? He narrowed his eyes. Ralph pushed him off strode towards the kitchen. Then he stopped, and addressed Scrape, who had been following enthusiastically. You don't come, then. I'll talk to her alone, just me and her. The little man stroked his beard thoughtfully. Good idea, he said finally. A good idea. They will want an independent trial. 
They might think I'm signalling her. Good boy. But I will be close by. I will be here in the library. She calls it the toilet. He added gleefully, then burst into a sleazy cackle. Ralph gave him a look of disgust and then turned and pushed into the kitchen. Linda turned around from where she was washing the dishes and took several steps backwards. Her face was even paler than before. Ralph understood now she was frightened of him. Finally, however, she summoned up her courage, stepped forward, holding out her hand. Goodbye, she said in a shaking voice. Goodbye, queried Ralph. You want me to go? Yes, she said, shaking her head as she spoke. Ralph took her outstretched hand and shook it. It was not a handshake that said goodbye. It was warm and welcoming. Is this really the first time you've been alone with another person other than him? asked Ralph, nodding towards the library. Don't call him a person, she said with a hint of annoyance. We don't let persons into the laundry. Only animals are allowed here. Cats have kennels in the river. Ugh, you've got everything back to front, said Ralph incredulously. All your words are mixed up. Front to back, she corrected, staring at him with a puzzled face. And you're the one with everything mixed down. You talk strangely. Are you drunk? I've heard that women behave strangely when they're drunk. Ralph's head began to spin. He couldn't take it in. He didn't trust himself to speak. He remembered Dr. Scrape's words. Dog is cat. Tree is lamppost. Ant is elephant. And just for fun, boy is girl. <sighs> Linda was looking at him as if he was mad. He walked over to the sink and picked up a fork. What is this? He said, waving it around excitedly. Oh, it's a chicken, of course, she answered. Ralph could see by her look that she thought she he was the one with the crazy speech. So what lays eggs and goes cluck cluck, he flapped his arms like wings when he said. The girl smiled with amusement. That's a fork. Haven't you ever seen a fork scratching for bananas? Ralph hung his head in his hands. Oh, no, he groaned. The swine's really mucked you up. You've got everything back to front, front to back. They don't dig for bananas, they dig for worms. He stared at her with pity-filled eyes. She was completely confused. She was also the most beautiful girl he'd ever seen. He bit his knuckles and thought over the situation carefully. Man was woman. Boy was girl. Ceiling was floor. Some words were right. Him and her were both correct. Suddenly he turned and ran from the room. He returned a second later, holding Dr. Scrape's exercise book. He flipped wildly through the pages, groaning and shaking his head as he read. The girl looked frightened. She held her head up like a deer sniffing the wind. That glass must not be read, she whispered, looking nervously towards the library. None of the glasses in the toilet can be read either. He ignored her fear. Now, he said to himself, let's try again. He held the exercise book open in one hand for reference. Then he said slowly, have you ever spoken to a girl like me before? Yes, said Linda, shaking her head. Ralph sighed and tried again. He held up the fork. Is this a chicken? No, she said, nodding her head. Ralph could see that she was regarding him with a mixture of fear, amusement, and, yes, I could say affection. Despite her bewilderment over what she considered to be his strange speech, she liked him. Suddenly, the enormity of the crime had been worked over on this girl overwhelmed Ralph. He was filled with anger and pity and disgust with Dr. Scrape. Linda had never been to school, never spoken to another person, never been to the movies or a disco. Fourteen years she'd only spoken to that monster Scrape. She'd been prisoner in this house. She'd never been touched by another person, never been kissed. The eyes met for an instant. The exchange was put to flight by the sound of coughing coming from the library. Quick, said Ralph, there isn't much time. Um, I want you to nod for yes and shake your head for no. Oh, Trad, I meant the other way around. Uh, consulted the exercise book. I mean, nod your head for no and shake your head for yes. He looked again at the book. The words were alphabetically listed. He couldn't be sure that she understood. But if the word for foot was head or head for foot or the word for shake was dance or something worse... Linda paused, nodded. He tried again. Have you ever spoken to another animal except him? He said, jerking a contemptuous thumb in the direction of the library. She shook her head sadly. It was true then. Scrape's story was true. Would you like to? He asked slowly, after finding that like was not listed in the book. She paused, looked a little fearful, and then keeping her eyes on his, 
nodded her head slowly. Tonight, he whispered, and then checking the book. No, tonight, today at midnight, no, sorry, midday, I'll meet you by that lamppost. He pointed out the window and across the rolling lawns of mansion by that lamppost. Do you understand? Linda followed his gaze. There was a lamppost at the far end of the driveway, which could just be seen through the leaves of a large gum tree in the middle of the lawn. He took her hand. It was warm and soft and sent a current of happiness up his arm. He asked her again in a whisper, Do you understand? She nodded. For the first time he noticed a sparkle in her eye. I didn't ask you to maul my son, a voice hissed from behind them. Ralph jumped as a grip of steel took hold of his arm. Dr. Scrape was incredibly strong. He dragged Ralph out of the kitchen into the lounge. You stay in the laundry, he snarled at Linda. The kitchen door swung closed in her face. Well, my boy, he said with a twisted grin. How did it go? Could you make head or tail of what she said? Or should I say tail or head? He licked his greasy moustache with satisfaction of his little joke. Ralph tried to disguise the contempt he felt. What would happen if she mixed with people in the real world, he asked. She was to leave here and go to school. Would she talk normally? Dr. Scrape paused and looked carefully at Ralph, as if reading his mind. Yes, he said, of course she would. She would model on the others. She would soon speak just like you, I suspect, but that's not going to happen, is it? Ralph could contain himself no longer. You devil, he yelled. You've mucked her up all right. She thinks I'm the one who can't talk properly. She thinks I'm a bit crazy, but don't think I'm going to help you. I'll do everything I can to stop you. You're nothing but a vicious, crazy little monster. He stood up and stormed out of the house. Dr. Scrape gave a wicked smile of satisfaction as Ralph disappeared down the long driveway. It was 30 minutes past midnight, and a few stars appeared occasionally when drifting clouds allowed them to penetrate. It was a different Ralph who stood waiting beneath the lamppost. Gone with the overalls, work boots, and smudged face. He wore his best jeans and his hair shone in the light of the street lamp. He'd taken a long time over his appearance. He looked anxiously at Liz's watch, and then up at the dark house. There was no sign of Linda. She was 30 minutes late. His heart sank as slowly and surely as the sun had done that evening. She wasn't coming. She had dismissed him as a funny-speaking crank. All that evil man had guessed their plan and locked her in a room. It began to drizzle, and soon trickles of water ran down his cheek. One o'clock. Still no sign of her. He sighed and decided to go home. There was nothing more he could do. She wasn't going to show up. The words started to keep time with his feet as he crunched homewards along the gravel road. Show up. Show up. Linda would have said show down, not show up. A bell rang in the back of his mind. A tiny, insistent bell of alarm. Once he heard Dr. Scrape speaking. Dog is cat. Tree is lamppost. Ant is... Oh, of course, tree is lamppost. And therefore, lamppost is tree. He almost shouted the words out. He called a lamppost a tree. Linda might have been waiting underneath the gum tree in the middle of the gardens, while as waiting under the lamppost by the gate. He hardly dared hope. He ran blindly in the night. Several times he fell over. Once he put a hole in the knee of his jeans, but he didn't give it a thought. He knew that she would have gone. Like him, she would have given up waiting and returned to the dark house. At last he stumbled up to the tree, finding it by its silhouette against the black sky. Linda, he whispered urgently using her name for the first time. It tasted sweet on his lips. There was no answer. Then, at the foot of the house, in the distance, he saw a flicker of yellow light. It looked like a candle. He saw Linda, faintly holding the small flame. Before he could call out, she opened the front door and disappeared inside. Ah, oh, damn him, blast, he said out loud. He smashed his clenched fist into the trunk of the tree in disappointment. A lump of bitter anguish welled up in his throat. He threw himself heavily down on the damp ground to wait. Perhaps she would try again. Anyway, he resolved to stay there until morning. Inside the dark house, Linda made her way back to her bedroom upstairs. Her eyes were wet with rejection. The strange girl had not come. She crept silently, terrified of awakening her tormentor. Holding the forbidden candle in her left hand, she tiptoed up the stairs. She held her breath as she reached the landing, lest her guardian should feel its gentle breeze even from behind closed doors. Betrayed! Betrayed! shrieked a figure from the darkness. The candle was struck from her hand and spiralled over the handrail to the floor below. It spluttered dimly in the depths. The dark form of Dr. Scrape began slapping Linda's frail cheeks. Over and over he slapped, accompanying every blow with the same shrill word. Betrayed! Betrayed! 
betrayed. In fear and shock and desperation, the girl pushed at the flailing shadow. Losing his footing, Scrape tumbled backwards, over and over, down the wooden staircase. He came to a halt halfway down and lay still. Linda collapsed into the top step, sobbing into her hands, not noticing the smoke swirling from below. Then, awakened to her peril by the crackling flames that raced up the stairs, she filled her lungs with smoke-filled air, screamed, and fainted. The old mansion was soon burning like a house of straw. Flames leapt from the windows and leaked from the tiles. Smoke danced from the moonless sky. A roar of falling timber awakened Ralph from a fitful doze at the base of the tree. He ran, blindly, wildly, unthinkingly through the blazing front door, through the swirling smoke. He made out Linda's crumpled form at the top of the staircase. He ran to her, jumping three steps at a time, ignoring the scorching flames, not feeling the licking pain on his legs. Staggering, grunting, breathing smoke, he struggled with her limp body past the unconscious form of Dr. Scrape. He paused, saw in that second that Scrape was still breathing, that his eyes were wide and staring. He seemed unable to move. Ralph charged past him, forward, through the burning door and along the winding driveway. Only the sight of an ambulance and fire truck allowed him to go and fall with his precious load, unconscious on the wet grass. Smoke inhalation, yelled the ambulance driver. Get oxygen, put them both in the back. Linda's eyes flickered open. She stared in awe from the stretcher at the uniformed figure. Only the third person she'd ever seen in her life. A mask was lowered over her face, but not before she had time to notice the unconscious Ralph was breathing quietly on the stretcher next to her. I want to speak to her, yelled the fire chief, striding over to the flashing truck. No way, they're both going to the hospital, shouted the ambulance driver in an answer. The fire chief ignored the reply and tore the mask off from Linda's mouth. He bent close to her. I can't see men in there, he yelled, pointing at the blazing house. Not unless there's someone inside. Is there anyone inside? Mother, whispered the girl. The fireman looked around her. She said mother. She hasn't got a mother, said the bald man who came over from the house next door. Her mother died when the girl was born. She's only her father, Dr. Scrape. The fireman leaned closer. His words were urgent. Is your father in there, girl? Is anyone in there? The roof is about to collapse. Is anyone inside the house? Linda tried to make sense of his strange speech. Then a look of enlightenment swept over her face. She understood the question. That was clear. But many have wondered if she understood her own answer. As the ambulance driver shut the door, she had just time to say one word. No.